So here's my attempt to answer the 10 most often asked questions I got from my followers about telescope mounts. What is a telescope mount? A telescope mount basically does two things. First, it holds your telescope securely and secondly, it allows you to move the telescope so that it can be pointed precisely at the objects in the night sky you want to observe or photograph. Most mounts have two elements, a sturdy tripod with legs made of metal or wood and a second element that is known as the mount head. The mount head is typically made of metal and usually has two axes to slew your telescope to any object you want to observe or photograph in the night sky. So what are the different types of telescope mounts? There are two main types of telescope mounts, altitude azimuth mounts or LDS mounts and equatorial mounts or EQ mounts in short. Both LDS and EQ mounts can track the motion of celestial objects in the sky, but they do so in different ways. LDS mounts track objects using simple up, down and left, right movements, whereas equatorial mounts are tilted at an angle that matches the longitude of your location. This angle also corresponds with what is called the North Celestial Pole, which almost matches the altitude at which the North Star Polaris appears in your sky. If you are living in the Southern Hemisphere, your angle or tilt will correspond with the South Celestial Pole, close to the star called Octantis. Once aligned with the Celestial Pole, your equatorial mount can exactly track the movement of objects in the sky. You will probably come across lots of different names for telescope mounts, such as fork mounts, Dobsonian mounts or German equatorial mounts. Just remember that most of these mounts can be placed in the two main categories of either LDS or EQ mounts. So what is the best telescope mount? Well, this really depends on your personal goals. The first question you need to answer is whether your main goal is to observe the night sky with a telescope or whether you also want to get into some planetary imaging or astrophotography. Let's say your main goal is to observe the sky with a telescope and look at some planets, stars, nebulas or galaxies. Well, if that's your main goal, you can get by with a simple manual mount like a Dobsonian mount and a telescope. Now keep in mind that with a manual mount, you'll need to do the finding and tracking of objects in the night sky yourself, which can be quite challenging depending on the weather conditions and your skill in finding objects in the sky. If your goal is to also do some planetary imaging, I would recommend getting an LDS or EQ mount with a computerized go-to system. With such a system, you'll be able to find and track the planets automatically in the night sky. Most such telescopes have a hand controller with which you can select any object in the night sky. Your mount will then automatically move to that object and start tracking that object. This saves you a lot of trouble of manually having to adjust the position of your telescope mount to keep the object in the center of your field of view. Finally, if your goal is to get into astrophotography, I highly recommend an EQ mount with a computerized go-to system. Only EQ mounts can exactly track the movement of objects in the night sky as they can be aligned with the North or South Celestial Pole. Now, some LS mounts they do come with a so-called wedge, which can be used to turn your LS mount into an EQ mount. However, as far as I know, this solution never results in tracking that is as accurate as buying a full-fledged computerized equatorial mount. So what is the best telescope mount for planetary imaging? If you're going to image the planets, you'll need a telescope with a long focal length and a relatively large aperture, since planets are among the tiniest objects in the sky. Most probably, you'll end up with a typical Maxitov or schmidt cassegrain type of telescope. Now, most of these types of telescopes are sold with a computerized LDS mount, such as a single arm style mount for lighter telescopes or fork mounts for heavier telescopes. These mounts are good for observing and uh, tracking the planets, but they are not great for astrophotography. So if you are interested in planetary imaging, you should also ask yourself whether at one point you also want to get into deep sky astrophotography. If the answer is yes or maybe yes, then I would strongly recommend you already invest in an EQ mount. This being said, there are a couple of advantages when using an LDS mount versus using an EQ mount. First of all, LDS mounts are not tilted, so they usually don't need any counterweights and this makes LDS mounts a bit lighter and more portable as compared to EQ mounts. 
Also, LDS mounts don't need to be aligned with the celestial pole, and they can continuously track objects across the sky without having to perform a so-called meridian flip, which is typical for EQ mounts. And as I said before, some LDS mounts can be outfitted with an additional wedge to mimic the tracking capacity of an EQ mount. What is the best telescope mount for astrophotography? I get this question a lot and the answer is tricky, because this depends on things like the type of telescope you're going to use, your budget, and whether you want a mobile setup which you can take with you on weekend or holiday trips. However, I do have a couple of general recommendations. First, you always want to buy an equatorial mount with a computerized go-to system. As mentioned before, EQ mounts can be polar aligned and accurately track your favorite deep sky objects from any location. Also, a computerized go-to system is pretty useful as you will be able to automatically find and track objects in the sky. Another thing you should take into account is whether your mount can make a so-called ASCOM connection. ASCOM is a non-commercially developed software standard with which you can connect your astrophotography gear like your telescope mount to software that uses the ASCOM standard. Now, this will enable you to control your mount remotely using a PC or a laptop. Now, my next tip is to buy a telescope mount with an auto-guiding option. This option can dramatically increase the accuracy with which you can track objects in the night sky using a second guide scope and camera. I will get back to auto guiding in a minute. Last but certainly not least, you should also check uh, the payload capacity of your mount. Payload capacity refers to the weight of all your astro gear, like your telescope and camera, uh, you will put on the mount. There is an unwritten rule in astrophotography that you should take about 50% of the maximum payload capacity of your telescope mount as the upper weight limit for astrophotography. Of course, this may vary between mounts, but as a general rule, your tracking will become less accurate when you get closer to the maximum payload capacity of your telescope mount. So what is the best telescope and telescope mount combination for astrophotography? I get this question a lot and it's actually a great question. As already explained, you first have to make sure your mount has a sufficient payload capacity to carry the weight of your telescope, camera and additional gear you may want to use. Another important aspect is whether the tracking accuracy of your mount is sufficient to take multi-minute exposures of the night sky. Astrophotography is all about taking long exposure pictures of the faint light from objects in space, like nebulas and galaxies. So, if you're going to take multi-minute photos, uh, your tracking needs to be as accurate as possible to avoid stuff like elongated stars or even star trails in your pictures. Now, tracking accuracy depends on lots of stuff like whether you have correctly set up and balanced your telescope and camera on your mount uh, and whether you use auto guiding and also weather conditions. Now one additional aspect that is often left out of the conversation and I do want to highlight this is the so-called imaging scale you are going to use to photograph the night sky. Now based on the focal length of your telescope or lens and the pixel size of your camera, you can calculate the so-called imaging scale in arc seconds per pixel using the following for formula. Pixel size divided by the focal length of your telescope times 206.265. Now the higher the number of your imaging scale is, the less accurate your tracking needs to be. For example, if you would photograph the night sky with a Canon 1200D camera, which has a pixel size of 4.3, and when I'm using a 200mm focal length lens, my imaging scale would be 4.4. Now, when I'm using the Celestron Edge HD 8-inch telescope at its native focal length of about 2000mm with my ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera that has a pixel size of 3.8, <laughs> my imaging scale would actually be 0.39. Now this means that my imaging scale or resolution is actually 11 times more sensitive when using my Edge HD telescope and camera than when I'm imaging with my Canon 1200D at a 200mm focal length. So, in case of my DSLR camera, 
I can probably get away with a cheaper, less accurate tracking mount or even with a sky tracker. Whereas with my Celestron Edge HD, I need a high quality EQ mount that can track with a sub arc second per pixel accuracy. So how do I set up an equatorial mount? The first thing you must do is to point the tripod of your telescope mount into the north or 360 degree direction if you're in the northern hemisphere at least. If you don't know where the north is, you can use a compass or a smartphone app. Next, it is good practice to level your mount. Lots of mounts have bubble levelers as part of the tripod, but I'm always using a leveler like this one. Next, you'll need to put the mount head into the correct latitude position of your location. Now, if you are unaware what the latitude of your location is, you can always use Google Maps and right click on any location and it will show you the latitude and longitude of that particular location. For example, I'm at 52 degrees latitude. Now, once you know your latitude, you can use the bolts on your EQ mount to put your mount into the correct uh, position. After that's done, you first want to put the counterweights on your mount before mounting the telescope. This is actually something I forgot to do in some of my videos and I always got a lot of comments from you guys and <laughs> rightfully so. After you've mounted your telescope, camera and perhaps other astrophotography gear you might want to use, it is a simple matter of balancing the telescope uh, with the counterweights. Now, some astrophotographers say that a slightly unbalanced mount may perform better as there is always some tension on the gears when your mount is tracking objects. But I hardly noticed any differences in my everyday astrophotography sessions over the past years. How can I nail my polar alignment with my equatorial mount? The alignment of your mount with the celestial pole is incredibly important. The better your mount is aligned, the better your mount is able to track objects in the sky. Most EQ mounts come with a poloscope like this one that shows the position of Polaris, the North Star, in relation to constellations like the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia. With most telescope mounts, you'll need to move the RA axis to about 90 degrees so you can actually look through your poloscope at the sky. You should be able to see Polaris the North Star through your poloscope if your telescope is facing north and when it's in the correct latitude position. It is then a matter of adjusting the bolts on your mount until the star Polaris is close to the center of your poloscope. Polaris should not be exactly at the center as Polaris is close but not exactly in the same location as the North Celestial Pole. If you want to know where the Polaris should be positioned in your poloscope, you can check out Polar Finder apps that show you how to put Polaris slightly off-center so you'll, ex you'll be exactly aligned with the North Celestial Pole. Now, most mounts also offer additional computerized options to correctly align your mount. For example, my Celestron AVX has an all-star alignment option with which you'll be able to slew your telescope to two to six stars in the sky. You can center these stars in the field of view of your telescope and the mount will then use that information to determine its position. Uh, an even more advanced option is to use software to really nail your polar alignment. For example, I'm always doing my polar alignment procedure using a software tool named SharpCap. After connecting my camera to SharpCap, the program will show me exactly how to move the mount left, right, up or down until I'm exactly polar aligned. Another option is to use an additional iPolar camera with software that uses a similar method. I've made separate videos on my channel about how to set up and polar align an equatorial mount and I'll put links in the video description below. How can I improve the tracking accuracy of my mount? You can improve the tracking accuracy of your computerized equatorial mount considerably with auto-guiding. Auto-guiding involves making small corrections to the position of your equatorial mount when taking long exposure pictures of the night sky. Most astrophotographers, including myself, use a separate guide scope and a guide camera that can be attached to your main telescope. You can connect your guide camera to your mount directly by using an SD4 cable that can be inserted in the auto-guider port of the mount. 
Alternatively, you can connect your guide camera using a USB cable to your PC or laptop and use a so-called ASCOM connection I mentioned earlier on. Now, most astrophotographers use PHD2 guiding software where your guide camera will take approximately one second pictures of the night sky and tracks the position of a so-called guide star that is near the target that you are imaging. If PHD2 notices minor movements in the guide star, it will tell the mount automatically to make small corrections so that the guide star remains in the same position when taking long exposure pictures. I have separate videos that get into what kind of guide scopes and guide cameras are excellent for auto guiding, as well as a tutorial video on how to set up PHD2, which you'll find in the video description below. How can I control my mount remotely? First and foremost, you'll need to check whether your mount has an ASCOM option. As mentioned before, ASCOM is a non-commercially developed software standard that allows you to control your mount remotely using software that has the ASCOM standard. There are many software programs available with which you can control your mount remotely. I personally started using Stellarium and Cartes du Ciel, which show a visual real-time chart of the night sky. This makes it easy to find objects in the sky and to point your mount to that object. One downside when using these software tools is that the target will often not be exactly centered in your telescope's field of view. So often you still need to make small adjustments to get that object you want to photograph exactly in the center of your photo. The absolute best way to remote control your mount is with software that includes a plate solving option. I personally use Sequence Generator Pro. Now, plate solving is a method where a live picture you take of the night sky is compared to a database of star positions. The software will find a match between your live picture and the database, after which it will tell your mount to make small corrections to get the object you want to image exactly in the center of your field of view. Besides Sequence Generator Pro, there are of course other software tools like Nina and Astrophotography Tool that have a plate solving option as well. I'll put links in the video description where I explain how to connect your telescope mount to software tools like Sequence Generator Pro and Stellarium. I'm happy to hear from you guys if the answers to these 10 most often asked questions about telescope mounts were useful for you in the comment section below. Also, if you have alternative questions about telescope mounts or backyard astrophotography in general, don't hesitate to ask them in the comment section. I always read your comments and I'll do my best to tailor my videos about astrophotography and astronomy to your needs. Clear skies!